internet was started back in 1961 by actually the concept of packet switching was in the PhD thesis of Kleinrock, who is a professor now at UCLA. Uh, so he wrote a PhD thesis saying that um, if we had packets, maybe we can do things better and so on and so forth. Then in 1964, a, a report was written that military should use packet switching and not the circuit switching. And in 1967, the Advanced Project Research Agency, which is actually part of the military, <coughs> they funded a project to start a network, first network, 1967. That was called ARPANET. That ARPANET in 1969 became operational and the first request for comment was issued. So what is the request for comment? Basically, so a small group was formed of four universities working on this. And whenever they wanted to have an idea, they would write it on a piece of, you know, on a memo, and then send it out to everybody. So it was called request for comment. I want to see whether you like this idea or not. And that has stayed. So even today, you can get RFCs. So today, we do it in an organization called IETF. Internet Engineering Task Force, and if you go there, you will find RFC number 842, RFC number 5023, RFC number 6000 something. And so we people in networking, when we talk about these things, they say, well, look up RFC such and such. And you go and look up that RFC from IETF. That is still continues from 1969. And um, so everything is, all the standards in the internet are documented in RFCs. Um, internet actually has changed quite a bit, and this is actually not from the book, this is some of our own research work. Basically the first thing is that the internet one was the original internet where basically everything was known to everybody. So when the universities started working together, they assumed that everybody knows what is the link between computer A and computer B and computer B and computer C, so we can find the optimal path. Right? That stayed until 1989. In 1989, the internet became public in the sense that NSF said, now we are not going to, anybody can use it. Anybody in the business can use it. So when people started using an AT&T, got into the business of providing services, they said, we are not going to tell you what the speed links are. Because they don't want to disclose, for example, AT&T will not want to disclose to Verizon that we have links of 10 megabits or you know, 1 megabit or 100 megabit. Right? So that's the private information. So the whole internet was changed then, and the routing was changed. Instead of optimizing the routing, up, routing became more policy oriented. So these things became black, black boxes. So the network became a, a concentration of lots of black boxes. And then now it is changing again. What is happening now in you know, 2009, it says, but basically, that is the current research topic that we are working on, is that not only these are black boxes, the network, but even the host are black boxes. So what happens is, if you want to do something, you go to Amazon and you say, give me 2,000 computers, and you can rent 2,000 computers just like that. And um, then after one hour, you say, gone. You know, I don't need them anymore, and you can release them, and so on and so forth. This is called cloud, so you can rent a cloud. And um, so, so this is what is happening on the hosts, are clouds, and, and what is happening inside the cloud is not really available easily to other people. And then the data, uh, and the user pe users are already a cloud in the sense that nobody wants to tell you how many users are in their organization. So there are there's a lot more, the internet is becoming a lot more closed in that sense. It was very open in the beginning. Everybody knew the whole thing. Now only some people know about their network, and now some people only know about their computers and their networks and their users. So it has gone through three generations. So let's see. Now this is all from the book, and the book is talking about that up until 1990, basically, the, so we were working on networking. I started working on networking in 1978, but nobody really noticed us. Nobody knew what is networking. Nobody in our company even noticed us because our company was digital equipment, and digital equipment business was to selling computers. Networking was just a side thing. And, but 1990, suddenly something happened, and that is what happened was in 1990, HTML came in. HTML came in, and we'll talk about that in the next lecture. That is a web page. 
right? So Bernard Lee, who was not even a computer scientist, he was a physicist, physics person, physics person, physics researcher. He came up with this idea of having a web page. And that just broke, broke the basically networking, brought networking into picture. And then Netscape formed a company to write, to, to basically, to write web servers and so on and so forth. And 1994, every university was looking for people to teach networking. I was working for digital. I got a call from Ohio State University saying that, you know, we need a professor, please apply. I said, no, I don't have a resume. I said, no, come on down, just anyway. <laughs> so, so there was a big demand suddenly for networking in 1994. And then it, since then it has gone up and up and up. And as I said in the very first lecture today, any company that is making money today is a networking company, whether it is Google, whether it is Facebook, whether it is Apple. So today, I mean, networking, you cannot live without networking. In 2007, 500 million hosts, everything goes over the internet, voice, video. Now we have P2P applications such as BitTorrent and Skype and PP Live. Then we have video applications, YouTube, gaming, wireless mobility, so many things about networking that we need to learn about. Um, so some of the key things that we will need coming up, first is IP. I'm going to use the word IP throughout, and you should know what IP is. IP is Internet Protocol. That is layer three. And IP addresses all of you have seen. When you say IP config, uh, TCP, IP, anything, then you see these addresses, which are 125.36.47.23. Have you seen that, right, all of you? So that is your IP address. And you have seen the names. IP names are like scorpio.cec.bushtel.edu or ibm.com or google.com or something like that, right? Those are all the names. So we will use those names. Those are actually what we call DNS, domain name system names, DNS names. And for the first 10 or 15 years, DNS did not exist. And so we just, the only thing we had was numbers. Then 10 or 15 years later, we realized that numbers are very difficult to remember. And we could not remember that 128.27 is, is Google or something, something, or, or, you know, or even Wooster. So we said, no, no, we should put the names, and then something should translate it. So we added DNS. And then IETF is the Internet Engineering Task Force. I have mentioned it many times in the class today and before. So IETF is where we go every three months or four months we meet. About 5,000 people get together, and um, they talk about, you know, in maybe 100 different rooms, 50 people in each room talk about different issues. Some people are working on mail systems, some people are working on security, some people are working on how to send voice. So there are many, many groups. And that is where the standards come out for related to I, uh, related to internet. And then they write the results of the documentary the RFCs. Okay. All right, so your third homework is find the IP address of your computer. All right, there is a command, there is a command called ipconfig. Write it down if you don't, I have never used it. ipconfig, I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G, no space. For Mac, it is ifconfig, right? We just execute that command in a DOS box or somehow and then you will get your IP address. Find the IP address of google.com. How do you find the address of google.com? You say ping, P-I-N-G, and then www.google.com. And it will tell you the address of that computer. Then you want to measure the delay. For delay, you say trace route, trace RT, T-R-A-C-E-R-T. You could measure the delay with the ping too. Yeah, okay, all right. So ping will tell you the delay, that's sufficient. Trace route will tell you the delay to every hop and it will tell you all the hops along the way, which might be too much, so that's fine. So these are some of the fundamental commands that you really need to know as we go along this course. And most of these commands will be executed inside a DAS box. Here DAS is disk operating system command prompt, 